Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei. Welcome back to another Power Query tutorial. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a data set with Portfolio Holdings. Yes. And we are going to introduce a line in Power Query that basically does a total for each of the portfolios and then does a grand total at the end. Now, I don't really recommend doing this in Power Query. I'd recommend doing this in something like DAX. But sometimes you got to do it in Power Query. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go. All right, first thing, let's pull it into Power Query from table. See this little step over here? Let's just rename that to data type. That step automatically happens. It changes the data type. So it senses this is an int and it's an int. We're going to take the entire data set and we're going to say transform and unpivot columns. It's going to create two columns, attributes and values. What we do now is we select the attributes and we say pivot column. These options, we go value, yes, in advance, we say count all. All right. Next, what we do is we take the editor and we say each. We get rid of this list count, sum, and we put the underscore in there. For more details on the underscore, check out the description because I go into detail what the underscore means and how it works. All right, and we press enter. Now, this is the sum that we want, the total that we want, but you can see we got the two errors. So we're going to use the try just check for errors and if it finds an error we say otherwise and we just make it a total now you can see what it did is on the portfolio name and stock just put total there and it did the sum of shares and the holdings all right we take this table we duplicate this table let's call this the sub total function cool so we've re renamed that to subtotal function we go into the advanced editor. We're going to make this a function, right? So we're going to say, like any function, we start with brackets. And we say, we're going to give it the variable name x. That's what's going to go in. We put a rocket hash in there. And we get rid of the source over here and all of that stuff. We don't need that. We just basically say, this data type should be x. Because we're feeding it that x value. And it does the pivoting. And we say, OK. Cool. So now we have a function. So now let's go back to the table. And there we can just take all of this stuff out. Now we're going to insert a new step, right? And we're going to say, we're going to call our function subtotal function. And in the brackets, we're going to feed it this table. Excellent. So it did exactly that. So it took our function, it pushed it through, and we got the same results. All right. Next, what we do is we take this and we say transform group by. We're going to do a group by by portfolio, but we're going to say all rows and say, OK. Right. So now that we have that, let's do some minor modifications. Instead of doing this total one there, which is the previous step, I'm going to refer to data type, the step just before. So now it gives us the portfolios as part of the grouping, correct? And you can see in each of that, these, it actually gives you the rows of each portfolio. I don't want that. But what I want to do is I want to say subtotal. I'm going to call my function. I'll say subtotal function in brackets. I'm going to feed it those rows. Say so, OK. So now if I click there, it gives me the totals for each of those rows. Cool. So this will now give me the totals for each portfolio. What we're going to do next is we're going to say underscore and subtotals and say OK. What you have now is if you check this out, you got for each portfolio, you got the holdings and then you got the total row for each of those. Pretty cool. What we do next is we take this expansion or the selection and we expand the selection. Here we go. So now before we do anything fancy with columns and column names and working with these totals, we just say at the end of there, we say and and I'm going to refer back to total one, which gave us if we look at total one, just a complete overall grand total. I want to add that. So I'm just going to say and total one. What this did now, it added a row at the bottom here for the grand totals. All right. Excellent. And now let's add a column. Let's call this column portfolio. And in there we can say if the portfolio name is total then portfolio name and 
yeah else if I want to cater for this null value there null then grand total else we just say portfolio name and there we go so there we have the grand total I'm just going to move it in front of there we delete that one we delete that one cool the only other thing we need to get rid of is under stock we just need to get rid of the value for that says totals I don't really want that in there now we have blanks there and there we have it we basically have our grand totals right through and our totals for each portfolio we bring it back into Excel and there you go there you go pretty cool and there's your grand total at the bottom well I hope you found this helpful in thinking about how Power Query works. Once again, I won't do this in Power Query. I would rather do this in something like DAX. But now at least you know how to do it. And it got you thinking a little bit more how to use Power Query and understanding mQuery. Well, that's it for me, BA Sensei. Until we meet again. Bye.